Thank you very much indeed, Madam Chair. I'm going to focus on a, a couple of the key points, give you a very a brief presentation of the report. All colleagues should already have a copy of the report. So I'll just try and run through the logic and the organization of the report and some of the proposals that were put forward. As you know, I try to divide the report into four different groups covering the four main questions. So not just looking at the role of the ECB, but questions related to monetary policy as well. And as such, I've, you can see the first section is monetary policy. The second is the economic crisis in the ECB. Third, banking union. And finally, I covered some institutional matters which I think are very important for this uh, assessment of the ECB's activity. Very briefly then, on monetary policy, I try to identify some of the characteristics of the ECB's work over 2011 relating to uh, price stability, inflation prospects. I try to identify two periods as you're familiar with these periods in the committee. The first period was characterized by an increase in interest rates. The way I see things, this was completely out of proportion to uh, the increase in inflation which had been identified because uh, the interest, rate, interest rates uh, were not a result from uh, structural problems but contextual problems. And then I moved on to the second period where uh, interest rates were dropped back to the original uh, figure at the beginning of the year, or the, the original figure from the beginning of the year. So I've, you're familiar with my views here, and I tried to highlight three main questions related to 2011. Now, I believe that uh, well, loans to families and small uh, businesses this year were considerably lower than the, the figures in pre-crisis uh, era, and I think we should be looking at exactly the opposite of this. There are very low levels of liquidity which are identified in the second half of 2011. These are very worrying indeed, in my opinion. If you believe that this could lead to uh, problems with the effectiveness of the monetary policy of the ECB. And then finally, another point I wanted to make clear is that I think that the ECB acted correctly in identifying that uh, there are problems with the financial system, but nevertheless, they continue to uh, change their policy and they do not set a conditionality of any type on uh, funds initiatives for the financial system and uh, loans made to uh, families and SMEs. This is an area, another area which they need to look at in terms of monetary policy. So those are the main points covered under the first point, uh, monetary policy, and these are all made clear in my report. Moving on to the economic crisis. I think it's very important to, to take a moment to analyse the response of the ECB in within the current context, and we all know that this is a time of crisis and there are austerity policies um, across the board, but these austerity, austerity policies were applied in an ever-increasing uh, number of countries. We know they have contributed uh, undoubtedly to uh, the contagion effects uh, across the Eurozone occasion they've caused crises in some countries, and that's something else I wanted to highlight. And similarly, I've identified a couple of points which I think are fundamental. Firstly, the um, ECB's mandate. This is a real problem. I've mentioned it several times in the past. The ECB continues to have a, a mandate which is very tightly linked to regulation of inflation, quite aside from any consequences which this mandate may have on growth and employment. I think the cause and effect here is very clear indeed as far as we're concerned. So this is one of the fundamental problems which I wanted to look at here. Now the second um, 
problem identified is that quite aside from the ECP's mandate being very limited indeed, and I think I've made clear why this is in the report, despite the fact that the mandate is very limited, especially given the what they have to face up to now, in the time of crisis they have exceeded their mandate in, on many occasions with the argument that everything that has been done in the current situation has been done uh, within uh, the official remit. That may well be the case, but uh, I think that uh, some of them, the ECB has been very much involved in some of the measures and the budgetary policies in uh, across different countries in employment policy, privatization, and so on and so forth. That, so their activity here in relation to their mandate is something else I wanted to raise. I think uh, we cannot continue along these lines. It's a very uh, there's problems of imbalance here, especially um, given uh, evolution within the eurozone. So the mandate is more of more of a problem, and this is something that we are going to have to look at. I don't know if this is uh, the time and the place, but we all know the consequences of the actions of the ECB. I do hope that we are able to have the necessary instruments and conditions to change the mandate if possible in the future. And finally, at the last two points, uh, banking union. As I have already said, uh, you are fully aware that uh, there is a project underway in the EU looking at banking union and related issues. There are, well, what I think is the central point here is that if we want to uh, face up to the effects of the crisis, we have to avoid the contradiction which currently exists. That is, we have a proposal which tries to bring together a European authority, a supervisory and oversight body, and at the same time continue with the crisis resolution uh, instruments which we have uh, running parallel on a national uh, on a national level. I think uh, if we can't reconcile those two problems, we're not going to come up with an effective project um, which can tackle the problems we have at the moment. I also wanted to um, say here that we need to pay attention to uh, uh, the fact that responsibility and accountability is lacking here. Decisions have been taken which have a serious impact on the lives of our citizens, and there is a lack of democratic control, democratic oversight, and this is unfortunately becoming an integrated part of the way the union works. Therefore, we do have to pay more attention to this issue, the issues of accountability, and think about what role uh, the parliament could do uh, in terms of monitoring, monitoring economic and monetary policy. And finally, just to shed some lights on some of the institutional matters which I mention in the report and some of the proposals I put forward. I have said that the ECB should uh, launch a self-evaluation process looking at all its areas of activity, especially looking at the impact of their adjustment programs, the impact of the countries within the Eurozone. They should also, uh, and this is my final point, perhaps, but not the least important, they should look at the absence or the lack of women on the, on the board of the ECB. In my views, on the, on the Governing Council, in my views, this uh, reveals a complete disregard for uh, uh, gender equality. This is something which has come up time and time again. It is a serious problem which does reveal something, the contradiction between uh, the proposals by the European Commission, who is trying to get more women into uh, positions of economic importance. I think there's a, a lot of uh, food for thought here. I'm sure my colleagues have points they want to put, put forward as well. Uh, perhaps they have alternatives or points which I haven't covered in the report. And for this reason, I am... Um, open to your comments and I will of course take note and discuss them because I think that the role of the ECB really does have to be rethought uh, given the current context. Thank you.